Hello friends, this is Sanjeev Kaushik and welcome to my channel Methodical Trades. In this very short and sweet video, I want to put a little bit of history in perspective when it comes to identifying bottom of the stock market. You see, I'm not that very old and it's one thing to read about the market crashes or market ups and downs and it's entirely another thing to have actually experienced them firsthand. I don't have the experience of dot-com burst. I also don't have the experience of the uh, late 1980s sell-off. So more or less my knowledge of these market dips have come from books or listening to uh, people, their experiences, who went through it and so on. However, during the last global financial crisis of 2008-9, that was the time when I was just starting off my investing or trading endeavors. I can clearly recall what was happening in Indian markets and some of the other Asian markets. I was very active. Back then, I was more of a news reader than the book reader or a chart reader. And at that time, something very interesting had happened and I'm seeing the same thing happening now as well and that may give us a peek into what is it that we can expect to happen in different markets or different geographies across the world and I thought I should share the same finding with you as well to put a little bit of perspective from historic point of view in somewhat gauging what can happen in future. So what we have here in front of us is the Nifty 50 chart back in 2008-9 and this is a weekly chart. So the blue chart over here is the Nifty 50 and I'm comparing it with S&P 500. Both are weekly charts. And here what you would clearly notice is that in 2008-9 Nifty dropped just like any other stock market and it printed a double bottom in 2009. However, when you compare the market action during that time in S&P 500, you will see that S&P 500 still made a lower low during the same period, right? So even though Nifty 50 was merely testing the previous lows, on the other hand, S&P 500 kept dipping. That was the time of extreme bearishness across the globe. Nobody was expecting for the markets to recover for another couple of years. I was invested and I was acting more like a short-term trader than a long-term investor. I was taking my profits and I would just exit. And I clearly remember that when Nifty had come down to these levels back in March 2009 I wasn't really tracking nifty back then but there was extreme bearishness and I ended up selling out all my stocks in losses and from there onwards even though the market recovered I could not muster the courage to buy I was extremely inexperienced and somebody should have shook me back then and told me that this is the time to buy anyway this is not about me this is about the markets and you so why am I showing you this comparison? You see, the recovery from GFC was Asia-led recovery. It was the Asian markets first, by and large, that started recovering and the Western economies recovered later. And it does make sense if you think about it logically because the original issue was from the over leveraging from the financial companies and banks in US and to a very good extent even in some of the European countries, right? That was the reason why. So the epicenter of the trouble was US and it made a lot of logical sense in hindsight that uh, Asians would recover much faster as compared to the Western world. Although at that time it was touted that even though the Western world may come out of it, the Asian economies will take much longer. However, exactly opposite happened and a lot of people could not spot the recovery. If you have anything to do with the markets, you probably would have figured out what I'm trying to say over here. Even in this downturn, 
we may not turn out to be wrong if we say that even this recovery would be led by Asian countries. The reason I've taken Nifty 50 example here is not just because I trade Nifty 50 a lot, but also because we are clearly seeing a decoupling of Indian stock markets from the rest of the stock markets, right? A lot of investors are taking the Indian market seriously. The weightage of Indian stock markets are increasing in MSCI uh, global index. What that means is that you will continuously see money pouring in in uh, Indian stock markets and it would always have a higher bottom in place as compared to uh, other stock markets that are not really performing very well, China uh, being one of the example, right? If this assumption comes out to be right, then we can not only expect this low to hold on Nifty 50, but also even if we see S&P 500 dipping down further, maybe by another three to five percent from the low of uh, June, right? Now I'm not predicting that it's going to happen. Uh, personally, I do believe that this low should hold. And even if we were to break down, maybe another three to five percent max, you cannot expect uh, a sell off deeper than that. And I would be surprised completely if we saw a drop below the 3400 levels because that was the high uh, before the pandemic had started. So I would be an aggressive buyer at 3400 on S&P 500. However, the reason for making this video is to show you that this is very much a plausible scenario going forward that we will see another Asia-led recovery and within Asia as well, it's going to be the Korean markets and the Indian markets that are going to lead the pack. Right. So we might see a bit of a dip, but we may not see a dip to these levels in Indian markets. And that would be a very good indication. Now, mind you, the investors more or less are same. People who move the markets are the same big banks, big hedge funds, institutional investors, uh, pension funds and so on. Right. So wherever they see the recovery first, that's where they'll start investing first. Right. It's the same hedge fund who's probably not buying in US and buying in India. And when the US will start outperforming, they will start selling India and start buying in US. The money supply, even though it's abundant, still has a cap. It's not infinite. Right. Now, it wasn't just India. It was also the Korean markets that at that time printed a higher low compared to S&P 500. And let me take you back to the 2008-9 crash. So this is the Kospi Composite Index, the most tracked index of Korean markets. And even here, you will see that the index held up even better than Nifty 50. Right? As you can again see, S&P 500 made the new low, but it wasn't really the case with Kospi creating a higher bottom. And from there onwards, it went up higher, a classic signal based on the Dow theory that the sell off has completed, right? However, not every market was behaving the same way. China, for example, could not hold its end and neither could Japan. Both these countries actually made lower low alongside the US markets. Maybe they've had their own issues back then. Um, I wasn't really aware of uh, what's going on. I wasn't really tracking the, the Korean index or the Japanese Nikkei and so on, right? So what is happening right now? If you haven't been tracking the Korean markets, you will find that they've actually held up quite nicely. And Korea and Japan are also the two countries that have been touted to be uh, slightly uh, cheaper as compared to other emerging countries. So I do believe that the low that Korea had printed here back again in uh, June would stay in place and we will see a higher bottom in Korea and it'll start going upwards. And right now, as we are talking about the Asian countries, the one country's stock market that I believe will outperform in future, it's definitely going to be Japan. Japan's companies have been consolidating for a decent period of time. And now most of their stocks have started breaking out. And I firmly believe purely based on my own technical analysis on uh, a handful of Japanese stocks that I track. I do believe that 
in a long run those stocks will get very high return and those companies also happen to be of course not just blue chip but also high dividend paying stocks so if you have a view of uh, international equities if you are looking to invest uh, perhaps not a bad idea to look at some of the japanese companies at the same time and of course i am heavily invested in india and i do believe that in uh, next three to five years the returns from indian stock markets would also be better as compared to many other countries especially the european countries all right so this is all that i wanted to cover in this video i hope you found this information useful and i'll see you soon